this is this is working. Oh. I have a couple of messages for you, or for the, the for the teachers who are teaching in the developing countries. The treatment of Frexit in developing countries is you have to think about safety first. If one cannot predict a safe result, do not operate, but treat non-operatively. In the next slides, I will show you why. Here, I have seen, I've been working now in developing countries for about over uh, four decades, and I've seen so many problems with implants. On the left side, you see an, uh, an internal fixation. But the problem there is that there is a very tight band around the periosteum. So this will end, you can predict that this will end up into a pseudothrosis. On the right side, you see an inadequate internal fixation ending up into an internal fixation as well. I think you better should not operate this case. How about the sterility? It is only uh, 150 years ago now that the surgeon Pavlov in Russia, this is painted by Repin, he was just hammering with a wooden hammer, no gloves, no mask. I don't know what happened with the patient, I hope he went all right. I think he did a kind of osteotomy, I'm not sure about the result from this. During my career, the morbidity shifted from polio in the, in the 70s to road traffic accidents in 2010. On the left side you see a painting of a severe polio case. And on the right, right side you see an, uh, a buffalo who was crossing the main road somewhere in Africa. I don't know, I don't know what. But this is the main road. And you can imagine if this car is going to pass, you're bound to have an accident. Here I have a slide taken from a WHO report from 2009. The blue lines you see the, the death rates per uh, 100,000 population. And you see in developing countries the death rate is much and uh, much higher than it is in the uh, western part of the world. The same applies to the, the red spots. Uh, this is uh, given by the death rate per registered cars. Again, much and much higher. What happens as well is you have less cars in developing countries, but relatively high, more casualties. Here is why. This is just an example of a uh, car accident which I happened to see on the road. Tom Slusser was with me at that time. On the left side, you see uh, sometimes when I'm driving and I'm sitting, uh, I never drive myself, but he's sitting behind on the road and this car is going to pass. On the right side, you see somebody who's crossing the red line. No, sorry, he's, co he, he's just crossing the white stripe, which is not allowed, it, even this is on the highway. So many passengers in this car, and if something goes wrong, you have a lot of accidents, a lot of fractures. What do we need for safe operations? You need clean operation rooms, clean, proper and sterile instruments, skilled and trained medical staff, a good follow-up, and what is very important as well is the maintenance of equipment. If you don't have these facilities, you're going to fail and you will have a disaster. I have taken some examples of uh, the problems we have met. On the right side you see the operation table. It is rusty, it's only 10 years old, it doesn't move up or down. Just a drop of oil will do, but it is only 10 years old. Well. We have taken this slide on a Friday afternoon, there were no operations anymore, but you see this is a real mess and it's going no sterility at all. You can't have an infection if you don't care for this. Supervising is important as well. On the right, on the right slide, you know the definition of an anesthetist is the man who's half asleep behind the patient who's half awake. Here you see a good example, the man who's <laughs> <laughs> the anesthetist is half, half asleep, the patient half awake, and I'm operating there, and I was not aware of it. Here again, you see, uh, this should not happen. You know, you have to take care of your, of your needles, you have to take care of your instruments. If you leave it like this, you can't have an infection. Message number two. It is worse to introduce an infection than to deal with a malunion, to my opinion. And I show you why. 
Here you see some examples of an infection. Again, taken from a slide from the 16th century. I think he's painting it from arsenicum. Well, this is an, an iatrogenic osomyelitis. And the only thing I could do with his leg, it was smelling a stinking. I had to amputate this one, which is, of course, a pity, because he already had an amputated left leg. But he was so painful, I had to do this. I have some examples of malunion. This patient came into the office walking. He had the only thing he had is pain in this spot. He has the x-ray and he has been treated by a traditional healer, a bone healer. Well, this is a malunion. But the, thing, the problem was here. Well, you can, of course, you can uh, reduce this one. You can put a pin and plate, but I think, well, just I resolved the problem, just taken off this exostorsis. And he has had no pain. And you give a little bit of an enlargement of the shoe, and he can walk, no pain, no risk. Some examples of uh, bad infections. Here you see a bad sequestrum. I have taken it out, it's about 12 centimeters, I don't know the inches, 12 centimeters. After an osteosynthesis. A disaster. You have here an. Oh, wait, wait. You see. No. You see here an infected plate, an arthritis of the right knee. Somebody had operated his knee. It's, go it's going to be very bad because you have to do an arthrodesis if the, in, in, in the hope the patient can walk again. This is a bad example of why you should not putting plates if you don't have sterile conditions. What is wisdom? Well, this morning I attended a meeting from uh, Patricia Foos and she, I was glad that she still, she still talk, you could still use the traction, the gallows traction, which is very useful. Here you see somebody had operated this patient with external fixation, but I don't I think this is of any use. You know, there is still no proper alignment, there's malunion, and you have a risk of pin infection. If you take the time six weeks, you always, you always, I never see none, you always get a good alignment and a good consolidation just by traction. Well, here have an example of uh, somebody sent to the office uh, by a traditional bone setter. Uh, we are glad we have here uh, Mr. Abere, who's going to give the first talk about bone setting. He came in with a uh, bamboo spine, and this is the result. He had no pain, but there's a malposition, malunion. What should you do? Well, to my opinion, if it is no painful and he can walk, I just leave him walk. I'm not going to correct this anymore. Message three. The residents always think operation is fun. You know, what they want to their e-car, they want to operate. What the teacher's opinion should be, open, fun can be very dangerous. And this is message number three. You always have to keep in mind the famous book of uh, Sir Dr. Robert Watson Jones, 1940, about the conservative, the more conservative treatment of, of fractal bone and joint injuries. The non-operative treatment of fracture, what does it, where does it consist of? Manipulation, immobilization, plaster pairs, sometimes wedging of the plaster, traction is very important, slowly weight bearing, and only, I think, only if you have a bad skin or an infection, you can use, in conditions which are not safe, an external fixation. It, I call it semi-non-operative. Here you have some examples of the Place of Paris. It can be easy on this side. It can be very difficult. And you have to control it every time. Because if you put this in the Place of Paris, you have to control. But this, this is an unstable fracture. If you don't have proper facilities, you can use the Place of Paris. But you have to use the control if available. And if, it, if, the, the, if the position recurs into a bad form, you always can do a wedging. You open the plaster and you put something in it. And you have to control it by Röntgen. And then, well, you hope it's going to be all right. Of course, in normal situation, you put a pin or a plate on this. But if you don't have that, you can do it with plaster of Paris. Traction on the lower leg, example. 
usually I do about 10% uh, of the body weight. Here's an traction of the upper leg. You don't have the run facilities. Fractures in the proximal femur. Here you see the traction. Upright down. It's going to be all right. Here have an example of a simple external fixation. Uh, we have this made ourselves. This is a very bad skin after I think six, four weeks of uh, fixation and cleaning. And after that you can use a plaster pairs when the skin is healed. If you don't have this instrument, what you can do is with the pins. And if you, don't, if you have acrylic cement, you can make a quite strong fixation with acrylic cement as well. What will be the patient's fate when failure occurs? Well, invalidity, serious illness, sometimes shock, social isolation, no employment, fam family will end bankrupt, and eventually you have to do an amputation, or the patient will die. The discussion. Management of fracture treatment remains difficult in developing countries. The most victims of road accidents will not have access to proper treatment. So always think about your results and to my opinion we should have more cooperation and education with the traditional healers and the bone setters. There are some places where you don't expect infection but if you are going to have a fracture here you still have a problem. Thank you very much.